Is marriage still relevant in the 21st century? I mean, as a pastor, I've heard this and its sister question, why get married, a lot. And the answer really depends on the purpose of marriage in the first place. Because if marriage is simply a socially acceptable way to tell people that you are together, then no, marriage isn't really needed anymore. But Christians have long praised marriage for being a God-ordained institution and claimed a deeper purpose to it. However, while the Bible talks a lot about marriage, it takes marriage as a given so much that it doesn't talk about the reason for the institution of marriage's creation. The closest the Bible comes is this famous passage in Genesis 2, which both Jesus and Paul quote. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and they will become one flesh. Now, this verse is often quoted in debates about marriage, except that it doesn't actually answer the question. I mean, it says, for this reason. For what reason? I mean, we know that people are getting married. The question is, why? Looking just a little bit earlier, this verse is found in a passage which talks about Eve being made to be a companion for Adam. And that Adam saw Eve and basically just started drooling. In Hebrew, a superlative, a best, greatest, that sort of thing, is formed by saying the blank of blank. So the king of kings is the greatest king. Highest of high is the tallest, or the highest. Now, Adam calls Eve flesh of my flesh, bone of my bones, that her body is the superlative to his. This is talking about how attractive Adam thinks Eve is, and that attraction is why men leave everything to become one flesh with a woman. Which, by the way, both uniting with someone and becoming one flesh are sexual euphemisms. This passage is much less a reason for the institution of marriage and more an explanation about people's sex drive. So the Bible doesn't give any clear answers as to the purpose behind marriage. And because it is not explicitly stated in the Bible, there are many conflicting arguments about why we should get married. Those who argue against marriage try to make the case that it is simply about a man owning a woman. And if that was all that marriage is, then there is certainly no place for it in the 21st century. But while that might have been part of its ancient form, there is far more to marriage than just a transaction of goods. At its best, marriage is a mutual lifting up of the other person. Now, another common reason people give for the institution of marriage is that it is meant for procreation. Now, this has been used a lot, especially to exclude homosexuals from marriage because they cannot biologically procreate, or at least not without medical assistance. And while it is certainly true that having kids was an integral part of marriage and people went to extreme measures to have kids, the purpose of marriage cannot be to have children. Because if there is no child, it does not end the marriage. In the Old Testament, it often opened up the marriage to other parties until a child could be created, but the original marriage was still in place. Likewise, a marriage does not end just because someone's child-rearing days are over. Divorce does not happen automatically when a woman hits menopause. Besides, if reproduction was truly the point of marriage, there would be better ways of doing it. And so the argument often switches to marriages more about the raising of the kids, not the creating of them. But really, community is the key to child raising, just not doing it alone. And while two people are certainly better than one for that, a large community of people looking after each other is by far the best, which doesn't have to involve marriage at all. Those seeking a more love-based explanation for marriage instead of just a physical one sometimes turn to the idea that there is just one person meant for you in the world. Your soul mate, and marriage is simply a recognition of this connection. Despite its popularity, this is patently ridiculous and completely against scripture. Most marriages in the Bible are arranged marriages. Some of them are polygamous, and none of them assume that there is only one person for you. In fact, there are any number of examples, even today, of people who found love that lasted until the death of their spouse and then found love again that was equally as powerful later in life. So let's look at marriage and love from a slightly different angle. We don't love someone because they are the best person ever, or the most fertile person, or the one person prearranged for all eternity for us. We love someone 
because we choose them. We choose someone to focus on and love above all others, and it is that decision and that focus which leads us to a lasting love, because our decision to focus on them and build them up is what shows us the parts of them worthy of love. That's how love of family works. We're simply close enough to each other to see the good parts. And it reveals that all people are worthy of love if we choose to focus on them and look for it. It's why arranged marriages actually worked okay for so many centuries. In the end, we don't love someone because of their merits, but because they are ours and we chose them. And this sounds remarkably like God's love for us, because it is not on our merits, but because we are chosen and beloved. And in that light, perhaps the Bible does point to the purpose of marriage. Because as I talked about in the previous video, link below, Jesus uses marriage a great deal to describe God's love for us. So what if we reframe our idea of marriage based on that? What if the purpose of marriage is to provide a safe and secure environment where people can grow to love in a way that looks like God? To give people glimpses into the sort of love that God has for us, something that a fallen, broken world needs to be able to see before it can understand. In that case, marriage was inspired by the model of the Trinity and of the love God has for us, a mutual self-giving because they are ours and we choose them. So, is marriage relevant today? Well, do we still need examples of that kind of love today? I would say, yeah. The problem, however, is that we have given up a lot. We have given up the religious meaning of marriage by allowing secular authorities to administer it and reinforce that through the amount of effort that Christians have put into shaping secular laws about marriage. By making marriage about what we do with our bodies and not our souls and our lives, we have also watered down marriage to something merely physical and legal. And by not standing against technically legal marriages like child brides and drunken Vegas weddings, we have also reduced the significance of marriage. Because it is hard to say that something is sacred when two people who've known each other for a grand total of 10 minutes can fully participate in it for 50 bucks. Now, marriage still has a place, and an important one today. We need those glimpses of God love. We need a counterpoint to the world's casual use of love. A counterpoint that says love is a choice that we continually make. That love can be based on more than just a list of pros and cons, or a rating of a person's attractiveness. That there are loves which are unshakable and make people better, make people understand heaven and God better. But after a century of shooting ourselves in the foot about this issue, we have a lot of reclaiming and healing to do before marriage can take its rightful place and be more than just a legal status again. Well, next week, I will be taking a look at the topic of homosexual marriage from a Christian perspective, walking people through the internal discussion and debates that I've been having on this issue for over two decades. I hope you find it helpful, but until then, as always, Thank you for watching. Have a great week. See you next Friday.